So I want to appreciate you, man of God, and I pray that the responsibility you gave me, you and your wife and the leadership of the church, you will not be disappointed. Clap your hands for the man of God. And also, I, with due respect and honor, sir, the Apostle John Alley that is here to listen to me, you know, the, the most difficult thing is to preach to pastors, especially apostles. <laughs> Because you have to be careful for what you say. Because he's checking you out. <laughs> Please clap your hands all the way from Australia. Thank you, sir. I saw, he's a, worthy, he's a man that is worthy of emulation. He's, this is the first time I see a white man that has eight children. You know, with many grandchildren. He's a true father indeed. He showed me his picture of his grandchildren. This is a whole church. Of his children in his 60th birthday with his wife. And I am humbled to know you, sir. May God bless you. Amen. Clap your hands for him. Thank you. And also, all the leadership of the church, the pastors, the bench warmers, everybody, clap your hands for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not scared if I. <laughs> And I used to preach for drug dealers and drug addicts. After preaching, I'll tell security to stand on the gate. If there is a drug dealer, I'll just run. Because that, when I, praise the Lord. I just want us to, yesterday we were talking about the yokes, breaking the yokes of the wicked. And we spent some time to pray for you. Today he said, grace to take the land. Grace to take the lands. In the morning when I was teaching the, the, the leaders, I was talking about the mystery behind submitting to an apostolic father. And I have my base in the book of Genesis chapter number 13. Today I will still have my base in Genesis chapter number 12. The popular scripture we all read. But there are some in-depth information that God is showing me in genesis chapter number 12 now the lord had said unto abram get thee out of thy country mark that country and from thy kindred mark that kindred and from thy father's house unto the land that i will show thee full stop verse 2 and I will make thee a great nation. And I will bless thee. If I were you, he say, I claim it in my life. And I will make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. My father, my father, in the name of Jesus. This is your word concerning my people. For the Bible says that it is not of him that runneth, nor of him that willeth, but it is of you, O God, that showeth mercy. Father, as I speak to your, your word unto your people, be in my mind and in my understanding. Be in my mouth and in my speaking your word. Be in my ear, ear and hearing that which you are saying. Father, I call upon your name. Do something new into the life of men and women that I am speaking to. Father, let it be a chain that is broken in their lives and in their destiny. Father, my God, I decrease and you increase this. Pour in me your net glory that your people will come to understand and appreciate that which you have called them to do. Father, I thank you because you have done it. Oh Lord, for you said in your word that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear no evil. In this land, my people will possess their possession in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, we call in this meeting grace to possess the land. But when you look at the text, God told Abraham, leave your father's land, number one. I will make thee a great nation according to the obedience of Abraham. So God spoke to Abraham Leave your country, your country where you are familiar with, where you have a lot of friends. 
leave your family, a family where you are connected, your mother, your father, your people, and leave all that you have into the land which I will show you. And when Abraham came to the land of Canaan, he became a stranger. He became a refugee. He began to seek for his paper. That even he was living in fear, but God has spoken. That as far as you enter this country through sheep, you enter through crossing the border. I am giving you the land. Because of the fact that you enter and acted in obedience. Because the criteria for God's blessing is obedience. The criteria for divine blessing is obedience. When you obey God, even though you do not understand what God is saying, but I'm just obeying because he asked me to go, he will honor you. And God operates in such a way that no man understands his ways. It's like a child that is playing a puzzle. The puzzle will be a scattered game. With his knowledge, he began to put it together. And when he began to put it together, he will then get an end result. When God speaks to you, it's like a puzzle. When he spoke, all what you do is that you have to act like a zombie. What do they say? God has spoken. I don't know what he means. But I'm got to do what I'm got to do because that is where my blessing lies. When man of God say, you are going to pray for 25 days. Listen, God told him, he doesn't need any logical reason why he must do that. But he knew that he knew that he knew that God has spoken. All what he need is for him to act according to what God has spoken. And as he continued praying, many people will mock him. Many people will say, I don't understand. We are walking and you are putting us into this stress. You don't need to explain to them because God has spoken. Because God is cooking something. And when he began to cook something, he wanted that thing to be done. And it takes time for it to be done. At the end of the occasion, God will unfold his glory. All what you need is obedient. Can you say obedient? When you obey the servant of God, you are obeying God. And Abraham obeyed. Can you say obeyed? Obey. And when he obeyed, God said, I will make, I will make. But there is something unique about Abraham. When Abraham entered the land of Canaan, according to the New King James Version, he said the land of Negev. He built an altar. What is the meaning of the altar? The altar is to express, to express the presence of Jehovah God. That whenever I remember this altar, I remember Jehovah God that spoke to me. Somebody need to understand that when God deliver you, you need to build an altar. What is an altar? Altar comes from a Hebrew word called Mizbah. M I Z B E A C H. Miss Bach is derived from the root word. He said the copper of sacrifice. Come on. In other words, there is a altar is inseparable from sacrifice. When you begin to get saved, there are three ways to build an altar. Number one, when God deliver you, you build an altar. Amen. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 18, verse 20. When God delivered Noah, he built an altar. And when God smelled the sacrifice from the heavenlies, he said, no more shall I destroy the world with water. He released a covenant of rainbow. Amen. So God delivered Noah and he built an altar. When God gave Abraham revelation, he built an altar in Negev. Now let's look at that word altar. Many years ago, God talked to one man from Africa. And that man was busy doing his thing. 
He said, go ye to the nations of the world and preach the gospel. He landed in Korea and began to preach undiluted gospel. And God spoke to him again. Come to New Zealand because God is seeing all of you. That these people need mercy. He sent this man who doesn't look fat and have big stomach like me to New Zealand. You know what I'm saying? And when he came to New Zealand, he built an altar and called it King's Mercy Global. You know that was whenever you have a problem, you come to the King's Mercy and you will be delivered. <laughs> I don't know who I'm talking to here. Whenever there is sorrow, you come to King's Mercy and you'll be free. When you get born again in King's Mercy Global Ministry, you are connected to this altar and you are building an altar with him. I don't know who I'm talking to here. Now, altar has been in existence before the inception of time. And the reason why some of us are suffering is because of the altars of our fathers. The question I ask you, what altar knows your name? Is it the altar of King's mercy that knows your name? Or the altar of smoking? Or the altar of idolatry? Or the altar of lying? Or the altar of manipulation. You can come to the church and lift up your hands and dance. But when you get out there, you begin to smoke. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. When you go down there, you begin to sleep with a man that is not your husband. You begin to sleep with a woman that is not your wife. The altar of idolatry knows your name. And you cannot get the land if an altar of the wickedness knows your name. Then let's talk about an altar. Let's talk about altar. Altar is a place of communion between God and man. Uh, can you say a place of communion? Altar is a place where God connected, where man connected to heaven. In other words, if the altar of wickedness knows your name, you are connected to that altar. But I come to tell you, for you to get this land, you will destroy the altar of your fathers and build an altar of the Lord. That whenever you look at this altar, you see it as a memorial for greatness. I don't know who I'm talking to here. The Bible says, when the two tribes decided not to cross over to the Jordan, the tribe of Manasseh, the tribe of Benjamin, and the half, half tribe of Manasseh, the tribe of Reuben, and the tribe of God, when they decided not to cross over in the book of Joshua, the Bible let us understand their soldiers cross over the other side to fight the war and the battle with the men. When they fight the battle and war with the men, when they get back to their place they built an altar and when they built an altar the children of israel got angry they sent Benihas, the son of aaron to go and ask these people why do you build this altar and they said let this be an altar of witness between me and you that whenever you depart whenever you guys get the land you should not forget forget me today this is an altar of witness that the lord is about to do a new thing what is an altar? Come on. Tara Sondra Keta Kashaka. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need about four volunteers. In the spiritual kingdom, there is no the geographical location. Whether you are from Samaya, Fuji, Tonga, whatever, Australia, New Zealand. When you serve the altar of the wicked, it will follow you. Look at what the Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 3. He said, worship no other God besides me. For I am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquities of the fathers. From the first, second and third generation. Show him mercy unto them that love me. And he come to Lamentations chapter 5 verse 7. He said, our fathers are sin. And they are not. And we have bear their iniquities. Come on. Now. Our fathers are saying, some of the challenges we are facing today is as a result of the altars of our fathers that is attacking our lives. But I come to tell you here that this land will be yours. Yeah, the altars of your fathers will be destroyed. Jehovah God will show you favor. Jehovah God will show you mercy. I don't know who I'm talking to, but today there will be a revisal of the altar. Let's get to the volunteers, please. Who are strong, responsible men and women? I want to see you come and stand here. I want to see three. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Women, too. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, let's assume. Come and stand here. I want to analyze something. What is called altar of attack? Stand here.
stand here. Face me. Face this side. Good. Face here. It's better you face. Let's assume I am your father. I'm not your father. Some of you are older than me. But I'm just analyzing. I'm your father. My name is Mr. Johnson. And you are Anthony Johnson. You are not Antonio, you are an African, so you might be something. <laughs> and you are James Johnson. And you are Theresa Johnson. And you are Matthew Johnson. And this is the idol I, your father, is worshipping. In African God, some of you might be ignorant of what is happening to you. But I want to open your eyes. In Africa, where you come from, which other countries... They worship an idol. South Africans, they worship what is called ancestral altars. Um, Africans, many of other in hinterland Africans, even some of you worship altars because they are, let's assume, and your father or your grandfather. And every year, I will come to this altar and say, Hey, God of our lands, I will offer him a flower, incense, or whatever. I was in a place called Thessaloniki many years ago. In Greece, you see, the Greece they worship dead gods. They worship if if they don't know anything. That's what the Bible says. What they don't know is what they worship. And I will come to this altar. I will offer sacrifice. I say, altar. Remember my son. Let's assume this one is in Australia. This is in America. This is in New Zealand. This is Tonga. And I will say, remember my son and my daughter. I call Anthony in Australia. This one in America. This one in Tonga. This one. As far as the blood that is flowing in my vein is flowing in their vein, they will be struggling because of this altar. Some of us today are struggling because they are calling our names somewhere which we don't know. And they have called our names in the past. But today I want to remove your name from their names. Amen. Because there is something the Bible says. He said there is a blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. And that is the blood of Jesus. Come on. In this altar, as I'm calling their names in this altar, there is a pattern that is following these people. Let's say this is a pattern of poverty. You've, you have gone to university. Get all the degrees you can get. You don't have a job. You are only working as a, as a janitor. But you're a lawyer. But you're a janitor cleaning the, the shopping malls. Every day you wear. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. And you are struggling. Because there is an altar that connected to you. This one has put his money in a whole lot of businesses. And there is always a story. It's the same pattern. That is connected to that altar. This one has got just pregnant three times and they all disappointed her and he was living on social every day they pay you every week they pay you 200 rand you cannot even think of future again and god has destined you to be a very successful woman and you are living in social the same altar this one has learned all kinds of trade no money is coming because of this altar and the blood that is connected to me it will continue affecting them one after the other and they cannot able they cannot be able to possess their lands how do you possess the grace to possess your lands is when this altar is destroyed god will give you the grace your land might be your business your land might be your job your land might be your success i don't know if i'm talking to people for years nothing is working they've tried many things there even in the church singing all the hallelujahs singing all the praise but they're still in Lodiba they were still bound in this situation and nothing is actually happening to them many years ago I was connected to that altar the pattern that was in my family was a pattern of delay and poverty it was so bad it was so horrible no one can help me until God gave me this revelation and this thing, you are coming to church. Every day you come to pastor, you cry to him. Pastor, I have tried many things and this thing is not working. Ladies and gentlemen, until this guy, when he now stumbled into the church, called King's Mercy Global, he received Jesus Christ. Now, the blood 
that, discon- that is connected to me, now the blood that will cover him will be the blood of Jesus. So when the arrow from this altar come, it will hit the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes whiter than the snow. Now, when this guy is covered from the blood, what he will do, he will then be separated from this altar. Jesus Christ says in Mark chapter 6, he said, those who are my brothers and sisters are those who do the will of God. He separated them from the altar of Joseph and Mary. And God told Gideon in the book of Judges, before I can walk with you, you must first of all destroy your father's altar. Because it's your father's altar that stopped me from doing what I want to do. I don't know if somebody hearing me. Now, when this guy separated, as he began to pray now, in the name of Jesus, his prayer will begin to hit the one in America. We begin to hit the one in Tonga. We begin to hit them. Because the Bible says, one can put a thousand to flee. Two, ten thousand. So the arrow that comes from this altar, when it comes, it will hit at the blood of Jesus and go back to sender. Because they will not see you. Some of you would have been dead a long time ago. But you are protected by the blood of Jesus. That blood that speaks better things than the ever. Ladies and gentlemen, I come to tell you that you will possess the land. Because the Lord is with you. Is somebody flowing with me? Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? As this one got saved, this one got saved, God won't get saved, this one got saved. Now it will weaken the power of this altar. But this altar has not yet been destroyed. Because this altar has been there even before your forefathers has been born. Now, do you know what happened? That's why, how is it that Christians, you are praying, but you still, the same problem that is happening in your family still continue. It's because there is a strong altar of opposition. You know, in my country, people who take prayer groups, they go and pray over the land. But still, the problem still continues. Why? Because there, this altar has been in existence. This altar is weakened. That is weakened does not mean that the altar is dead. Let me give you an example. In the Bible, the Bible talks about the kings of Israel. The Bible says the Israel was divided into northern and southern kingdom. And in the southern kingdom, it's called the Samarias. The Israel, where we have Ahab, Manasseh, uh, 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 Manasseh, all these kind of people, Jezebel. Where we have the stronger prophets. The Bible says because of the sins of Jeroboam. Jeroboam the son of uh, Nabat. Begot Abihu. Abihu was a bad man. Before they, they begin to have Zimri. They begin to have uh, Ahab. Oh, man, and they have great prophets. Then you come to the northern kingdom. Where we have the, 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 the Jews. The Jews we have. Uh, 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 we have. We uh, have. We have Hezekiah, we have, we have uh, Isaiah, we have Zedekiah. Now you find out when a new king comes, if he's serving God, he will burn all the golden image and the land will be at peace. That they burn all the golden image does not mean the altars has been dead. When another king comes, the another king who is doesn't serve God, we go and they are waking the altar again. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That does not mean that. But as far as you are standing in the Lord, you are being protected by the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Now, how is it that sometimes you are weak to pray? How is it that sometimes what you have, when you get born again, you were doing, when you get born again, you are still doing some of those things. Because there is an altar of opposition. And that altar comes as a retaliation spirit. 
The Bible said when you bind a strong man, and the strong man will go to an angry place. When he come and find the house empty, he will go and take the seven demons stronger than him and come and possess this house. And he said the former will be stronger than, the latter will be former than the stronger. That's why every day, that's what Jesus Christ says in Matthew chapter number 27. He said, watch and pray that you do not fall into temptation. I don't know who is learning deliverance right now. For you to possess the land, you have to destroy the altar of the wicked. For you to possess the land, you have to disconnect yourself from your father's altar. For you to possess the land, you have to look up to the altar of the Lord. The altar of the Lord. Let's talk about the altar of the Lord. King Mercy Global Church. In this altar, when you look at it, there are two things that are in this altar. Number one, we have the platform. The platform that carries the pulpit. The pulpit is people who are in the pit of hell and you are pulled out of the pit of hell. It is in this altar that Pastor Prince can address the New Zealand government. It's in this altar that Pastor Prince can preach you to conviction and tell you, repent from your wicked ways. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is coming soon. The Holy Spirit will go and hit your heart and say, who want to give his life to Christ? You were in the pit of hell and you pull on it. And in this pit of hell, in this pulpit, there are three guiding principal, principalities that are guiding it. You know, in the altar of wicked, there are principalities and powers, rulers of darkness. But in the altar of God, about mercy there are three principalities that are guiding it god the father son and the holy ghost <laughs> i don't know who i'm mesmerized i don't know who i'm talking to here in other words whenever there is problem in your life and your destiny you go to the altar of king's mercy global Amen. today you are going to separate from your, the altars of your father some of you have been struggling for so long you have nothing to account for i used to know one of my son anytime he sent money home that is where his problem began. Anytime he sent money home, that is where his... Not knowing that his uncle, this guy was born, his mother, he has no father. His mother had him while he was staying at home. And it happens that there was an uncle that raised him. So every day, he would send money to his house, to his mother. And the day he would send money to his mother, he would have one problem after the other. He will end up losing his house. His wife will run away. It's not just one problem after the other. Not knowing that whether he send money. His mother will take the money, come to the uncle and dance and say, please, this is the money my son sent to me. The mother will give him a bit of the money. The uncle will go to his room and pin that money and say, this boy will not survive. He pinned him on his goodness. And one day he came to me and said, Apostle, this thing has been a problem. I said, okay, whenever you want to send money, go and drop it in that altar and pray. The following morning, let that money be reached tomorrow. Just take it and send. Any power that is not of God that is following your kindness will retaliate against him. And the guy went, drop the money on the altar, pray. The following day, he sent the money through Western Union to his mother. Do you know the mother, as she normally do, get the money and give the man. As the guy was about to pin the man, he fought instant stroke. Boy, and was shouting, John, leave me alone. John, leave me alone. Took him to the hospital. On reaching to the hospital, he died. Because the altar that surpasses all altar has taken place. I don't know who is fighting you with your goodness. I don't know who is fighting you with all the effort. But I come to announce to you in the altar of the Holy Ghost that the Lord will give you victory. I said the Lord will give you victory. The Lord will give you victory. Some of you, you are working so hard and you have nothing to show for. You walk out like an elephant and eat like a grasshopper. You struggle all day. You think that maybe there is an altar of opposition coming from your, the land of your nativity. There are two opposing forces. The altar from the land of your nativity and the altar from the land of your dwellings. Today, I begin to declare any power standing against your life in the mountains, in the trees, in the forest, in the altars, in the moon, in the Orion. Today, it will submit in the altar of the Lord. 
Do you know what happened, sir? Moses went to Pharaoh and told Pharaoh, let my people go. The Bible says he threw his, his stack. A very hungry and tiny serpent came. <laughs> you don't understand. A very hungry and tiny serpent came. And Pharaoh called his musicians. A very giant serpent came. The tiny and ugly serpent said, I've been hungry for years. I don't know why Moses produced it this way. He went, thank you, Pharaoh. He went and swallowed the big serpent and fulfilled his stomach. The altar that surpasses altars. When the altar of the Lord appears, demonic altar disappears. Today I come to announce to you that demonic altars will be disappeared in your destiny. As these people are connected, you know what happened? The Bible said, one can put a thousand to flee. And he began to pray. Father, deliver this one in America. Father, deliver this one. Deliver this one. As he began to pray, his prayer began to have a tremendous effect in the life of these people. Do you know why you are here today? It's because somebody has already prayed for you. And as he was praying, something was pushing you to God. You don't understand what I'm saying. I said something was pushing you to God. You don't know where I'm going. I said something was busy pushing you to God. Because somebody is standing between heaven and earth. And said this woman will not perish. This son of mine will not perish. This man will not perish. You order of opposition. I begin to make a declaration. My son and my daughter will possess the land. As they are praying, Musandra Sonda, the altar of God is moving in your space. Munakanda Kusakaka, you are taking over the language Sanda Kadege because God is your strength. The light Bible says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the counsel of the Almighty. I will say, The Lord is my strength. The Lord is your strength. Madonga Saramahunda. As you are pushing, God is doing something. He said, I will do anything. Come on. Do you know I came from a very wicked place where people don't want to see head that rose? I don't have time to talk about the power that attack your head. You have authority. It was so bad. Nothing is happening. I was living like a misery. People see me, they thought that I'm mad. You know, can I tell you something? We do respect and honor. When a poor man preached the Bible, people will thought that this is semi-madness. Your shoes are torn. Your trousers are messed up. Your Bible is finished. You don't cut your hair. Your teeth are dirty, turn brown, because there is no toothpaste. No perfume in the body. And you tell them, hey, Jesus! They say, nah, something is wrong. Something is wrong. <laughs> But when, you know, there are people that thought that I'm sick. They say, this guy is sick. I said, hey, Jesus loves you. When I'll be standing in the train preaching, the train of Cape Town, South Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is coming soon. Some people ask, this boy is smelling. This boy is sick, sick. Remember Jesus, you are mad. But when God now turned the captivity of Zion, the Bible said they are like them that dream. Then our mouth full with laughter. And we will say the Lord has done a great thing in our lives. And when I was going to turn around my captivity, all those people that thought that I'm mad, some of them are members of my church. Because the Bible says that he uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and the weak things of the world to confound the strength. I don't know who is laughing at you in your situation. Tell them to wait that I'm coming. I am coming in a grand style that God is about to do something. He said, I will do something new. He will do something new in your life. Because since the world began, 
and now I am getting old. I have not seen a righteous forsaken or a child of God beg for bread. Do you think that you will beg for bread when you are serving God? No ways. Unless he's not a Jehovah Jireh. Unless he did not die in the cross of Calvary because of you. Hence he has died in the cross of Calvary before because of you. He is about to do a new thing. I know my Jesus. My Jesus is Lord. And this man gets saved. This other man gets saved. When they all get saved and get born again, you know what is happening? This altar will be weak. This altar will be suppressed. Then, you have one useless uncle in the village. You know these uncles, eh? They will come. Let me tell you, African gods are dirty gods. You know African gods, they are very dirty. You know how we pour libation to our gods in Africa? You take, that's what you call cola nut. It's a small nut. You know when you visit somebody's home, you ask them tea or coffee. They are, they are very, come visit is tea or coffee. You see coffee or tea. That's a western way of receiving a guest. But in my community, the African way of receiving guests, I mean, down Africa, is cola notch. They give you that small cola. Now, when you get that cola, you know what they do? They will come to their gods. That man, is, his teeth is very ugly. He never brushed his teeth for months. He used some, sometimes he used chewing stick to kill his teeth. He will take that cola. Hey, gods of our land! To your God. Don't you think that your God is a dirty God? Somebody take something in mouth and give your God. You say, God of Allah. <laughs> I give you cola. Some people give flour, but our own with our dirty teeth. That's why I say African girls are very dirty. <laughs> they are very dirty. And they will get a hot drink. A very hot local drink. They will say, hey, God of Allah, drink wine. <laughs> to your God. Chai. And this is the person you are worshipping. Hey, this is the person you are worshipping. <laughs> Dirty God. Ay, ay, ay. You call him name and worship him. <laughs> you worship a dirty thing. Something you take your dirty mouth and <laughs> <laughs> you give. Ay. Some of you will go, ancestors, I give you this drink. I give you this to your ancestor. Now, those that worship ancestors, let me ask you. If your ancestor is a thief, you are worshiping a thief. Your ancestor marry your grandmother, abuse her, use her as a farmer. Use your mother as a grandmother, as a slave, and you are worshiping him. If I see that ancestor that abused my grandmother, I will kill him. I will not forgive him in a hurry. This is the person you are worshiping. Your ancestor that lead you to idolatry. This is who you are worshipping. That's why Jesus said, worship no other God besides me. Because those gods are the wooden image. Those gods are wicked altars. Those gods are wicked powers. This is what you are worshipping. Now, this uncle of yours, who is your father's brother, maybe he's dead. He doesn't see clear. And say, these people have forgotten their father's land. And they are in Europe, America, living like white men. That's what we do, we African stock. And they will call this person. Can you send money? Let us go and appease these gods. Somebody who is going to church, praying. Immediately you take your one cent or one dollar to send to that man you have connected back to that altar. Some of you, there are times you send money without knowing. You call it culture. But you are connecting to an altar. In South Africans, what they do, they will cut their fingernails. They will dedicate it to their ancestors. I've been working on this deliverance. I don't know where your, intest- your, your umbilical cord was buried. You don't know who took your umbilical cord. You don't know the tree where your umbilical cord was buried. But today, the Lord is going to vomit them 
and you are going to be delivered, and the favor of God you are with What you are doing, so, do you know sometimes Apostle Paul even said that in Romans chapter 7. That I want to do, I do not. That I do is that which I don't know want to do. You, don't, you know, I've worked in the prison for almost 19 years. In one of the biggest prisons in Cape Town, Paul Small Prison. Do you know I've worked with, most of my members are ex-prisoners. Some of them are ex-gangsters, prisoners. And when you ask them, why do you go and rape that nine years old girl? They will tell you, Pastor, I don't know. I don't, if you ask me, I don't know. In South Africa, they rape two years old girl. They do all kinds. People are killed with just, because an argument, somebody will be shot. You understand what I'm saying? And you ask them, why do you do this? They say, Pastor, I cannot explain it. Because there is a spirit behind that. Some of the things you do, thank you, man. Thank you, sirs. Some of the things you do today, sometimes you don't know. Because there is a spirit. But I come to announce, and I come to decree and declare that somebody will be free tonight. See ya bonga Jesus. See ya bonga Jesus. See ya bonga Jesus. Hallelujah. See ya bonga in Zulu is thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Amen. You know something like that. If God has not been with you. In, uh, Psalms chapter 124 enemy would have swallowed you but thank God because he's with you and he that begin a good work in your life is about to bring it to completion he's about to do a new thing do something new in my life something new in my life something new in my life oh Lord somebody is going to do something new But you cannot do something new. God cannot do something new in your life without you knowing him. They say, Abraham acted in obedience. And he was connected to an altar of consecration. He was connected to an altar of deliverance. Those that know their God will do great and do exploit. First of all, you must know God. If you don't have a relationship with God, you are wasting your time. And I want to challenge that man or woman who has no relationship with God. And I want to tell you that tomorrow might be too late. The Bible says it's appointed unto man to die once and after that the judgment of God. Can I tell you something? I repeat this word again. If you get born again as a child of God, you will go to heaven. If you get born again, you go to heaven. Lazarus got born again. But poverty and ancestral wickedness kept him in perpetual bondage. That he was not even popular in heaven. But Abraham got born again. Abraham had a city called Abraham Bosom. And even when the, when the rich man died and went to hell, he still see as Lazarus as, an, as a messenger. He, he didn't say Abraham go. He said send Lazarus. So Lazarus is recognized as a poor man on earth and poor man in heaven. May it not be your portion. No? Yeah. I want to have Danchima Boulevard. Yeah. I want to have Danchima Boulevard in heaven. Made with diamond and gold. He says, send Lazarus. He didn't say send Abraham. He even called him Father Ab. Father Ab. Nah, my brother. Father Abraham, send Lazarus, the messenger he know on earth. The Lord is about to connect you. So when you get saved, you go to heaven. But for you to survive on this earth, you need deliverance. You need deliverance. And that is what I do. I've traveled to nations of the world. I have spiritual sons, pastors, churches all over the world and the, everywhere I go this is what I preach and this thing has taken me to places that I've never been to because 
when God has delivered me, he said, I sent you to go and destroy wicked altars and raise up godly foundation. And that is what I do. Somebody must give his life to Christ. If you are here, you are not born again. Before we start praying, I want you to rush out here. I want, I want you to lead to, be, to the Christ. Then we'll start working on this. Is there anybody here who is not born again? I am not born again. I told you yesterday that we, we must come with families. Anybody here who is not born again? Are we all Christians? I stop looking at me now. I'm not a, I'm not a Hollywood star. I'm a preacher. Anybody who say, Pastor, I really want to know Christ. I really want to know Christ. I will pray for you a very short word of prayer. Lift up your hands. I want to know Christ. Please. Thank you, ma'am. Come. I thought you lift up your hands. Okay. The Baba lift up. Anybody who wants to know Jesus? There is somebody here you are ashamed. I want to know Christ. Now, what I wanted to do tonight, because of time, this time is flying, and that's a problem. I want to pray for families. I want to pray for families. I said, if you are coming, come with your children. I want to pray for families. Even if it is one of your child, or even if your child is not here, and you want to come out with him. There's something I want to do. Can I tell you something? When I found out about this altar thing, what he has done, the ills he has done in my life, and I went and prayed for deliverance. I, I had my, my 16 years old boy was born in an abandoned building. An abandoned, useless building. No toilet, no bathroom. It was a dilapidated place. That is, he was born in a manger. <laughs> like Jesus. <laughs> but that boy, they show me how now, in his 60 years old. I, I, when people ask me, how is your son? I say, I'm, the boy is doing me what I did to my father. So it's 50 50. <laughs> now, and when God saved me, when I got born again, I was, do you know? If I want to be a drug dealer, it will be a snap of a finger. If, you want, if I want to be a froster, it will be a snap of a finger. If I want to do anything to do to get money, store credit card, bread, do this, it will be a snap of a finger. But there is something that is telling me that there is deliverance in this world. If I continue hanging on to it. And God gave me some kind of revelation. And I went to pray and disconnect my, my house to my father's altar. What I did, when I was growing up, my parents used to take me to witch doctors, to native doctors. You know what I'm talking about, magicians. When they go, they say that there is something in you, they will scratch your body. And they will, you get white chicken. You know, my, my, you know the irony part of it? My mother is a very big Anglican woman. She's uh, one of the women. They call it mother senior. My father is one of the parochial committees in the Anglican. But they go to this devil doctor in the night. If the chicken is crying, shut up, come, shut up. They will go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, so when I got saved, I came to the altar of the Lord, take my children, and take a seat, take money, and say, any altar where they have given money on my behalf, I cancel it with this altar and the pastor prayed for me that was the beginning of my deliverance and I want to do it in this church listen if you cannot do it do not come I beg you don't go there and whine your mouth this pastor come and collect all our money I don't, do you know my coming here cost me nearly $4,000? I didn't ask you for the money. I come for the work of the Lord. Amen. And God in heaven will honor me. Amen. I have gone to churches and prayed. The pastor tell me, thank you, praise the Lord, save, go, so save. I came back, nothing happened. But this year, God gave us a property where we are building our cathedral. Under two weeks, we got a land got a church boss, got things. When God decides to honor you, 
he will use an insignificant people. So I'm not interested, but I want to help you. If God helped me, I will help you. And it's not compulsory. You come with your family, I will stand in agreement with your pastor. If your children are in the children class, there will be a lot of chaos here now. You go and bring them. If your family is not here, and you want to do that seed, I will tell you what you will give to the pastor, not me. Because this pastor is your, is your is spirit. If you are not a member of this church, and I will, I will also tell you what to do. But this pastor is the spiritual oversight of this church. And also one of the, one of the gatekeepers of this land. Amen. And there's a grace. Even he himself will do it. So tomorrow I'm bringing our prayer request. As we are praying for the prayer request, I'll be praying for my church too. You understand what I'm saying? That is how God does. Nobody is a superstar in the kingdom of God. Amen. Lift up your hands. Say spirit of God. In the name of Jesus, I break every walls, every walls of wickedness. I declare you be broken in the name of Jesus. Spirit of God, I thank you because you are a faithful God. I give you all the glory and honor because you are a merciful father. You are a compassionate and loving king. Father, I decrease and you increase in the life of your people. For the Bible says if the people who are called by my name shall repent from their wicked ways and, uh, and, and seek my face, then I will hear them from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their lands. Father, today I speak over the land of Auckland, New Zealand. I speak over the dwellers in this land. I begin to pray, you land, I command you to bear fruit. If Jericho war, if the Jericho land that was caused by Joshua was released by prophets, Elisha, may you release this Jericho walls, this Jericho land. May you release any cause that is caused in this land by this unction. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pull down every power that is not of God. Father, I begin to establish the altar. I speak over this land. You have said, give us the grace to possess this land. Father, our land might be our sickness. Our land might be our financial lack. My land might be our marriage. Our land might be our property. Oh Lord my God. You said we are not saved by observing the law. But through faith in Christ Jesus and by grace we are saved. Ah! Father God give us the spirit of salvation in the name of Jesus Christ. Do something new that your name will be glorified. You. Who is that lady? Your auntie. You see this man. As I'm standing here praying, I see him preaching the gospel. As I'm praying in the land, I see this man preaching the gospel to nations. I'm just praying. The Spirit of God just show me where you are preaching. Yeah. Yeah, but you are, you, are, you are called by God. Otherwise, you would have been dead a long time ago. But there is a hand of God in your life. And you are, the prayer of your mother is like a force. She's a place, person that prays in the closet. And I see you lifting up your hands. You don't have to preach. You can start preaching with your family. In your family. Start preaching and God will begin to honor you with deep things of God. They are trying to build a prayer life because I see this man spread his hands preaching while I stand here. Stretch forth your hands towards him, please. My father, my God, you are only faithful in a land which you do not know. Father, I don't know this man, but you show me this man in the spirit. This thing, nobody has ever told him this. But God, confirm that which you have studied upon his life. Open doors and show forth your loving kindness. Father, you can do it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to appreciate you. Tomorrow again, we're going to have a wonderful time. Remember, I care for you. I'm praying for you. Your pastor is praying for you. 
you also pray for me. On Monday, I'm flying back again. I came on Thursday for this conference. On Monday, I'm flying. If I leave on Monday, I will get there on Tuesday night. South Africa, which will be Wednesday morning here. So it's two days on air. I also covet your prayers. May the Lord be with you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. We really appreciate your presence. Tomorrow morning, we are having seminars here from 9.30. You know, the seminars, we're asking people to donate $10, $20 because we need to take care of our guests. Amen? And uh, we need to honor them and, and make sure that they go here ha being, you know, happy with us. Because when, when your guest ministers are happy, you will be blessed. But if they are murmuring, you're not blessed. Amen? So we, we, we will be having a seminar. Please don't miss this seminar. If you're not doing anything, forget about where you're living. Apostle John Ali, I told our, our apostle, I said, sir, we didn't ask you here to come and preach. We bring you into this, this nation as a, as a father. Even before he came, I told our church that I'm looking for a father who will bless the foundation of this ministry. And I followed Apostle John Ali's ministry for some time, watch him, and see the things he says and things God have used him to do. And I honor him. I believe I pushed to have a genuine grace in his life. So he's here not just to preach. He's been preaching all his life. But he's here to bless. He's here, he came with a, 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 an oil in his lungs to bless this nation and to bless us. So I see him. I receive him as an angel of God. And I receive him as a father. So from tomorrow morning, he will be sharing here. You know, he will have two, ses two sessions. Mo morning, mid-afternoon. Mid and then Apostle... A manner we conclude afternoon, you know, and he will do the night program. He will he will be ministering by seven. So Apostle John will be ministering three times tomorrow while Apostle Emmanuel, you know, once, Amen. And then on Sunday we have also three section: morning, afternoon, afternoon is two thirty, and then evening seven thirty. Seven, I mean, Sunday service seven ten thirty. Please don't miss his teachings. You need to come and hear the things he says and how the Spirit of God communicates through him, Amen. Please do come to this seminar tomorrow morning and you will be blessed. Amen. May God bless you for coming. Please lift up your hand. Amen. Let's give the Lord another hand. Praise the Lord. Amen. What an awesome night. We pray that God will bless you where you go as you take the land. Amen. Come on and give the Lord a shout of praise. One more time. We're going to give it all to Jesus. Come on.
Put your hand together for Genesis. Clap, clap for them, clap for them. Wow, wow. We are so blessed. Thank